Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I think we're ready to get started. So, um, hello. This is exciting for everybody. I see all the kiddos out there. My name is Stacy. I'm with Midwest Dairy Association, and I'd like to welcome uh, Williamsburg Elementary and Blue, Strength, Street, Blue Stem Elementary and Eisenhower Elementary. I'd like to welcome you guys this afternoon. We're excited you could join us, and we are ready to get started and we hope you're excited to go um, and take a tour today of a, of a dairy farm there in Kansas. We've got Steve Strickler, one of our dairy farmers, who's, who's going to be joining us here. You can see Steve there and we'll, uh, we'll get started and then you all can ask some questions later on and, and hopefully we'll get all your questions answered. So um, again, the reason we're doing this is because March is National Ag Month and so we want to help celebrate that and celebrate Kansas agriculture. And we're excited that you could join us to, to do that with us. Uh, we hope that you know that uh, farmers are the reason we have the clothes on our back and the food that we eat and the houses that we live in, all of the products that we have are because of farmers and we're very grateful for those folks. So, and we hope you are too. So let's go ahead and we'll get started and we, you all answer or send in some great questions that we wanna make sure that we get answered here later on and um, very thoughtful questions. So great, great questions that y'all sent in. So hopefully we'll be able to get those answered. Just a little bit of housekeeping. We'll, uh, we have everybody on mute. So once we get started um, with the questions and, and answers with Steve and things, I'll unmute uh, the classrooms one by one. So we'll hopefully do that uh, correctly. Uh, just bear with us a little bit. So uh, we, we, we hope we'll do it right and uh, we'll get those answered for you. Also, we understand that uh, the Kansas Farm Bureau brought in maybe a treat for you later on, some milk and cookies, and uh, we'd like to do a, a milk toast at the very end. So hopefully we'll be able to, to get that in as well. So, so we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing we wanna show you though is a short video of Steve's farm, the, the dairy farmer, Steve Strickler, that were in Iola, Kansas. We wanna take you on a farm tour there with a video, and then we'll go live out to the farm with, with Steve. So we'll show you this video here and we'll get started. Full screen, right, there we go. where my family and I live and where our 350 dairy cows produce wholesome, nutritious milk for you to enjoy. Dairy farmers have always cared about the importance of passing on a better future to the next generation. And we've been dedicated to child nutrition for more than 95 years. Join me on a tour of our farm to see firsthand how we bring dairy foods like milk, cheese, and yogurt to your family. We house our 350 milk cows in what's called a free stall barn. This is where the cows eat and rest. And during the summer months, you'll notice the fans. We keep the, try to keep the cows cool with fans and a mister system, which puts water on their backs and makes an evaporative cooling system. This is also where the cows eat. We work with the nutritionist to develop a, a balanced diet for the cows. It's based on hay, grain, and silage called a total mix ration. A cow will eat about 85 pounds of this feed a day, and during the hot summer months, she'll drink almost 100 gallons of water a day. This is the milking parlor where we milk our cows three times a day. The cow's udder is cleaned and sanitized before attaching the milk to unit. A milking machine attaches to a cow's udder and gently removes the milk. It only takes about five to seven minutes. A cow's udder can hold way over 50 pounds of milk, and she certainly feels much better once she's milked. We work closely with our veterinarian to keep our cows healthy and comfortable. Healthy cows produce more milk, which means more milk for your family at home. Cows are just like young people. They require a good, healthy diet. And their health is monitored on a regular basis by veterinarians. And the calves also have good fresh bedding and good clean water and nutritious dry food to eat as well as the milk every day. Okay. 
Okay. So from the classrooms, by raise the showing your hand, who wants to be a dairy farmer? Anybody? Does anybody want to be a dairy farmer? Of course you do. Now, <laughs> let's go out and uh, let's talk with Steve here and see, uh, see what it's like to be a life on the dairy farm. And we will go, let me unmute Steve. Okay, and we will. Cool. We will turn it over to Steve. How's that? Hi. <laughs> it's fun being a dairy farmer. We love it. And, uh, you know, a lot of kids grow up wanting to be a fireman or a policeman. But uh, I think I've wanted to be a dairy farmer for mm, about 60 years now, I think, something like that. And I have been a dairy farmer since 1978. That's a long, long time ago. And my father was a dairy farmer before me. And his father was a, a dairy farmer before him. So I'm actually a third generation dairy farmer. And as you learned in the video, we milk about 350 cows. And we milk three times a day. Uh, a lot of dairymen just milk two times a day, but uh, we, I guess we like it so much, we milk three times a day, and uh, the cows really like it. So um, we've been in business uh, since about 1947, I think, is, is when we actually started milking uh, cows. And you know what's one of the interesting facts about our farm is we are just 20 feet from the city limits of our town of about 7,000 people. So we're very, very close. In fact, people in Iola, Kansas kind of consider our place as their farm. So, you know, we're always having people drive in with their children or their grandchildren and drive by and look at the, the calves and so forth. So it's, it's really kind of cool. So, this is my farm manager, uh, Harry Klubun, and he, uh, gosh, he's been here for 30 years. 30 years. That's a long time. <laughs> so we're here to answer all your questions, or at least try anyway, and tell you how much fun it is to be a dairy farmer. This looks like a great group. Are y'all milk drinkers, we hope? And cheese? And ice cream, oh my gosh, I eat so much ice cream. I love ice cream. I'd eat it for three meals a day if I could. <laughs> it's great stuff. So, well, okay, this is, this is just something. Let's, uh, Steve, do you want to tell the, the class, I know the video showed a little bit about how many times a day you milk your cows and how many, uh, how you take care of them. Can you tell us just a little bit more about the feed that you, uh, what a cow might eat, or maybe what those calves eat that you uh, showed there at the very end. We can, or I'd, I'd rather that Mr. Klubine would do that. He, uh, okay. he's, he's a lot closer. Okay, well, thank you. Um, we, we'll start out with the calves. My uh, baby calves, they all get uh, milk out of a bottle. They get fed twice a day. We'll start them out on a two quart bottle. And within 10 days of age, they are drinking three quarts twice a day. And uh, we'll start them on uh, dry grain. And uh, they'll start eating, uh, oh, half a pound a day. When they get up to four pounds a day, then we wean them off the milk and they go on to a dry feed. And uh, the, the mature cows that uh, we actually milk, They'll eat about uh, 50 pounds of dry feed a day, which would be about eight pounds of alfalfa, uh, 55 pounds of corn silage, and uh, about uh, 20 pounds of a grain mix, which would be corn, soybean meal, dried distiller's grain, and corn gluten feed. And he drinks a lot of water, and we average about uh, 75 pounds of milk per cow per day on production. So you, so you said pounds, how many gallons would that be? So the that, Well, that'd be about uh, uh, nine gallons. Yeah. Nine gallons a day gallons. per cow. It's about a bathtub full of water a day. How about that? That's something y'all can relate to. 
a bathtub full of water. Just think about that. That's a lot of water to drink. And then in the summer months, they drink even more water than that, too. So it's just like you. They get thirstier during the hot times than you probably are during the cold times, right? Yeah. And then, too, we talked about uh, milking the cows. You milk them three times a day, uh, every day of the year. Uh, so there's there's not much of a break. Can you? I know you brought a prop there. Can you show us uh, what it what the prop is and and what that has to do with milking the milking the cows? <laughs> well, we we told you we were going to have a prop, but we didn't uh, we didn't no. get it in time to show it. So, <laughs> but they actually, Stacy, they saw the, uh, the they saw the milking procedure in the video, so uh, mm -hmm. that might prompt some questions as to as to how we milk the cows, but you're right, we do milk them three times a day, and we've we've done that uh, for about 30 some years, I think, and um, it takes about 10 minutes to milk a cow, and remember Mr. Klubine said that they give about 75 pounds a day, that's about uh, nine gallons of milk, so you know, when you go to the grocery store and you look in there and you see those big white jugs of, of nutritious milk, that's about a gallon. So just think a cow gives about nine of those gallons a day. So she's pretty efficient. And, uh, you know, the other thing that's kind of interesting is we try to be, there, there's a big word called sustainability. And we try to be uh, as environmentally friendly and sustainable as we possibly can. So, you know, now stop and think about this. If a cow eats all that food, she's probably gonna poop a lot too, okay? So what we do with that is we compost it. It's really cool. And we take, it, it heats all the bugs out of it, and then we put that right back in uh, for bedding for the cows. And so it's just kind of a big circle, you know? And then we also use some of it for fertilizer to grow the corn for the cows. And remember, Mr. Klubine talked about corn silage. And that might be something that's kind of foreign to you because what we're able to do is not just use the grain of the corn, but we grind the whole thing up, okay? And then we feed it to the cows. And so a cow can stop and think. You, you couldn't eat a whole plant of corn, could you? Okay, you just eat just the grain part of it. And that cow has four stomachs, okay? Where you just have one stomach, a cow has four stomachs and she can go out and eat stuff that you and I can't eat. She goes out and she eats grass and she eats the whole corn plant and she eats alfalfa and she just eats all kinds of things, you know, that, that you and I can't, possibly eat and then she makes that wholesome nutritious milk that we all love okay she's a pretty cool critter i'll tell you really neat okay i think i think we got eisenhower elementary back i think we lost him there for just a second but uh -oh. are we the are we ready to ask some questions would the elementaries like to ask some questions to steve can i okay Let's go first to, how about Blue Stem Elementary? Can the kids, kiddos from Blue Stem hear us? Yes. Okay. Do you cool. have a question? Do you have a question for Steve and Harry? Steve, did you hear that? No, I didn't. They wanted to know who or what inspired you to be a dairy farmer. Oh, wow, that's easy. My dad, and my dad was my hero, you know, and so I always wanted to be like dad. And so even though I went to school to be a journalist, I did that for a while, but then I ended up coming back to the farm a long time ago so I could be like my dad and, and raise my family on a, on a dairy farm. 
And my kids learned how to work on the farm and be responsible and have chores to do and stuff. And, you know, that, that's a really easy question. My dad was my inspiration. And so, uh, you know, that's, he was, I bet your dad was probably your inspiration too. So, you know, we, uh, Mr. Klubbein, uh, his dad was a dairy farmer as well. So it's it's kind of funny. It, it kind of uh, gets in your blood. Gets in your blood. <laughs> we all like to milk cows, you know. So we think ours is a very noble profession because we're we're helping feed the world, and there's getting to be more and more people in the world all the time, and we're going to need more and more food. And again, we think milk is the best food that you can that you can produce, and so we feel we feel good that we can help feed the world. Good question. Okay, let's go over to Eisenhower Elementary. I think they can hear us now. Let me unmute them. And let's see. Oh, I can't find them on my list. There we are. Okay. Oh. Being used for milk production. I'm, I'm, can we have Eisenhower Elementary repeat that? I'm sorry, I didn't get you off mute fast enough. So if you could just repeat it real quick, I'm sorry. You're fine, thank you. What happens to the dairy cow after it is no longer being used for milk production? That's a really good question. You want to answer that or do you want me to? Okay. Uh, uh, the neat thing about, one of the neat things about a dairy cow is she's very mm, versatile, okay? And so once a dairy cow um, uh, stops producing milk and she's at the end of her lifetime, then we can all also use that cow for meat production, okay? So like when you go to McDonald's or Wendy's or someplace like that to have a hamburger, chances are that that uh, uh, delicious uh, hamburger might have come from a dairy cow. And certainly, we hope you put cheese on the, on the hamburger and make it a cheeseburger. And we don't care about the pickles, you know, but we, we like the cheese. And so if you eat the cheese on it, that probably came from a dairy cow as well. So... I don't like pickles. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like pickles. You know, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Let's go to Williamsburg Elementary. Do you have a question? Yes. Do you always use milk machines, or do you sometimes do it by hand? <laughs> <laughs> Well, go ahead. as long as we have electricity, we have a milking machine. Yeah. <laughs> and we do actually have a backup generator, so if we do lose uh, electric power, we can still milk cows. But, uh, yes, we do milk them all with the machine. Yeah, and can I get your telephone number in case we run out of electricity so I can call you so you can come help us milk them by hand? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, next question. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Blue Stem and let's get their next question. So, Blue Stem Elementary, do you have another question? I think you do. <laughs> there you go. Do you still milk the cows even if they are sick? Oh, that's a really good question, too. You guys are really asking great questions. Um, yeah, we still milk a cow when she's sick, okay, because um, that's one way to, uh, to nurse her back to health, okay? okay? But when we do milk the cow when she's sick, we don't uh, put the milk, um, it, it's not for drinking, all right? And so we just throw the milk away is what we do. But, you know, cows are just like you guys. So if you go to the doctor and you're sick and you have to have some medicine, uh, we throw that milk. We, we treat cows, too, with, with uh, medicines, all right? And so when we do that, then we just throw the milk away, 
okay? Or, or maybe feed it to the cats or something, you know, cats. We got lots of cats around here too, so they like drinking that milk too. Okay, good question. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see here. Okay, let's go back to Eisenhower. I think they have another question. Let me unmute you real quick. Okay, the next question from Eisenhower. How many years or months will a dairy cow be milked? Ooh. Go ahead. Actually, a, a cow will produce milk for uh, several years, but ideally when we try to breed a cow to make or to have her calve every 12 months, and uh, <clears throat> the two months before she is due to have a baby, we will actually dry her up and give her a mini vacation to get her ready for her next lactation. So a cow can milk anywhere from 10 months to a year and a half, two years. Yeah, and as far as the age of a cow, I think maybe that was part of the question as well. You know, some cows, we have cows that are 12. 14, and, 15 years old. Yeah, 12, 14 years old. So they stay around and they're productive for a long time. And, you know, the, the key thing is to keep them comfortable and keep them happy and keep them well fed. And uh, kind of like you guys, you know, yeah, as long as you're – you're uh, well fed and you're comfortable and you have a nice bed to sleep in, you know, you guys are pretty satisfied. And that's, that's our goal here is to try to keep the cows satisfied and keep them happy so that they uh, produce that nutritious milk that we all like to drink. Okay. Okay. And we have another question from Williamsburg Elementary. You are on. What do you do with the milk when you are finished milking the cows? Can you sell the milk yourself? Oh, well, we do sell the milk, but we don't sell it to individuals. Actually, our milk goes to a dairy cooperative. Now, do you know what a dairy cooperative is, anybody? That's actually where dairy farmers all join together, okay, to become more efficient and so we have a big milk truck and it holds 5,000 gallons of milk, okay? And he comes uh, every day to pick up the milk, all right? And then that milk is transported to um, a processing plant like Highland. That's something you're probably familiar with. Uh, Highland Dairy is actually in Kansas City in your area. You know, that's also the home of the Kansas City Chiefs, too, you know. You'll have to notice that I got my Chiefs uh, sweatshirt on today. And I see several of you cheering in the background. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, so then it goes there, and it's made into uh, – it's either put into the, the uh, carton that you get, the gallon container or maybe half-gallon container. And then even some of it's made in my favorite. That's chocolate milk. Oh, man, I love chocolate milk. And uh, so a lot, some of it's made into cheese. Some of it's made into yogurt. I like yogurt, too. Butter. Butter. Yeah. It just, there's so many things that you can make out of milk that are really good and good for you, too. So, oh, and you guys probably get it at school. And school milk, right? And little containers. I think most of them are probably plastic containers now. And, um, you know, they might even be drinking our milk. That, oh my gosh. Our milk goes to Kansas City to be processed. So. Oh my. There's a pretty good chance. Oh man. You guys need to come down and see us. I'll tell you what, and find out where your milk comes from. That would be cool, huh? Oh man. We'd love to have you come down. <laughs> Steve, okay. Steve, I don't Steve. see anybody falling asleep yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned your milk goes to Highland. How long does it take to get there? So from the time it leaves the cow till the time it gets to their school cafeteria, how long is that? Good question. Uh, two days, yeah. And from our dairy, it only takes about two hours. But uh, it's, it's processed there and packaged and, and taken to the grocery store uh ivy and all those stores and that's where your mom and dad probably pick it up 
So two days from the time it's produced on the farm to the time that you get it in your refrigerator, okay? All right. All right, so it's very fresh and very local, I guess I guess we can say so. Yeah. Um, we do have time for some other questions. If there's any, just some, I guess we can open the floor to maybe some random questions. If anybody, uh, if it, any class has another question, if you wanna raise your hand and, and I will, um, I will, un oh, Blue Stem Elementary, you all have, looks like y'all have a bunch of questions here. So let me unmute you real quick. And we'll go to Blue Stem Elementary. What is, whoever raised their hand, I'll let your teacher pick. How's that? How much money does it take to keep the cows? Is that what you said? How much money does it take to keep all your cows in one year? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> as my as my grandson would say, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's a lot. Let's see. I like to think about that one. Well, our feed cost per cow per day is about seven dollars per cow. So if you have three hundred and fifty cows at seven dollars, that's two thousand dollars a day. For three hundred and sixty five days it'd be over seven hundred thousand dollars. Just, to feed. Just for feed. Just for feed. See, that's why you want to study math in school. I never was very good at math, you know, so uh, that's something you need to probably need to learn. Hey, you know, one other thing we should talk about is technology and how uh, milking cows has changed through the years. Remember I told you that my dad was a dairy farmer? Uh, he didn't milk cows by hand, but things have changed a lot in the last few years. In fact, did you know that our cows on our farm wear a little ankle bracelet, okay? And when they, when they come into the barn, okay, and we, uh, we put the milker on the cows, there's a little antenna that reads uh, the cow's uh, radio frequency tag that she wears, and it, it records how much milk she gives each milking. Uh, it also records uh, the temperature and the, and the consistency of the milk. And what's really neat to me anyway, it records how many steps she's taken since she was in the barn the last time. You know, they have a lot of people talk about, yeah, Fitbits and all that kind of stuff. Oh, we've had Fitbits for a long time, you know. And our cows, they, they're, they stay in good shape by just walking a lot. It's pretty cool. You know, and so then she goes back out, and the next time she comes in, then they re it records how many steps she took since the last time she was in the barn. So, you know, we do that a lot. Oh, the other thing is that we have security cameras all over the farm, too. So uh, I'm going to be in a meeting in Washington, D.C. tomorrow, and it will be so cool because I can, I can check my telephone, and I can watch the guys milking cows at home. And I can look at the, the maternity pen, and that's where the, where the mama cows have the babies, you know. And I can look, and I can call somebody and say, hey, Martha's getting ready to have a baby. And so they can go check her out, and it's just really neat. But we have five or six cameras around the farm just to see what everybody's doing. So that, that's pretty cool. That's, that's about all I got to go. Yeah. Do we have any other questions from any of the other classrooms? Do we have? Uh, oh, I see a whole bunch of them. We do. I think I, do I see Williamsburg? Do you have a question? No? Yes. Oh, yes, they do. Okay, hold on just a second. Let me unmute you, Williamsburg. Hold on. We know you went to school for journalism, but do you need a higher education to be a dairy farmer or hands-on the best way to learn? Oh, <laughs> well, I always tell people, and this, this probably won't answer your question, but I always tell people I'm a journalist by education and a dairy farmer by experience, okay? 
but I also have a degree in, in dairy science as well. So it, it certainly helps to do that. I mean, I know people that, in fact, we have one employee that came from the city. And she got a degree in dairy science, and she's now a dairy farmer. So um, it helps. The more education that you can get, the better. All right? So just always remember that. Besides that, it's fun to stay in school, you know? So you always want to do that as long as you can. That's the way I look at it. But good question. Yeah, great question. Okay. Eisenhower, I think you guys have another question. I see a hand raised, so let me get you unmuted, and you can ask your question. How much milk do you guys produce a year? Oh, about uh, 8 million pounds. Okay. <laughs> That's 8 with... What? Six zeros behind it. So that's a, that's a bunch. It's about a million gallons. Yep. About a million gallons of milk. Wow. <laughs> can get, yeah. Can you guys drink that much? I hope you can. <laughs> but what is it we say? Uh, drink more milk. We'll, we'll make more. Okay? That's what my cows say. All right. Good question. Okay. <laughs> Lots of questions. Lots of good questions, uh, yeah. really helpful questions. So any, oh, I see more hands. Okay, Blue Stem, we will let you ask your question. You're on. There she comes. On a cow. One more time. Has anybody ever stolen a cow? <laughs> that, that is a good question, actually. Remember, remember, I told you that we were just 20 feet from the city limits of my hometown, okay? And uh, I don't know that we've ever had a cow stolen, but we've had a couple of babies stolen because they're pretty, I mean, they're just. They're just right there. We raise our calves in little individual calf hutches. They kind of, if you can think of a, a, a big dog house, uh, we raise each of the calves in individual hutches, individual dog houses, okay? And we do that for, uh, for uh, to, to keep the calves healthier, okay? So like in your case, you know, you might get a cold and the next thing you know, your whole family might have a cold or something, okay? But we keep our calves separate in these individual houses. And so that's actually one reason why we put security cameras in so that we could see um, if anybody strange drove in, okay? And because we, we don't want to, we think they got a pretty good home right here. So we don't want to, we don't want to lose them to somebody else. Okay. That's a good question. I hadn't had that one. <laughs> That is a good question. Okay, we have time for some more if anybody else has uh, some other questions. I see, I see, I see lots, lots of hands, hands. Yeah. At, at Blue Stem. We'll just, we'll keep going with you then. Blue Stem Elementary, your next question. Do you need a dairy farm with goats? Um, do you need a dairy farm with goats? Oh, okay. sure. Yeah, it's, it's a, in fact, I did a story one time when I was working for a magazine. Um, this was a long time ago, but I did a story about a guy that was milking 250 goats. Uh, that was pretty interesting because um, I had been from a dairy farm and I walked onto this guy's place and I walked into the milking parlor. Well, you know, a dairy goat only has two teats, okay? And so when you hook up the milker, a cow has four teats, okay? So you hook up the milker and the milk flows down. Well, a goat only has two and a goat is a whole lot smaller. 
Now, think about that. When I, so when I walked into this barn, everything was miniature. You know, it, it was really funny. And all I could do was laugh because I'd never seen a goat milking barn before. But yeah, there's there's a, a goat. There's a big demand for for goat milk as well. Like when you eat at some of the Mexican restaurants, some of it's actually goat milk. So it's it's all good. Good question. Good questions. Any others? Maybe. Do any? <laughs> I see Blue Sim has all kinds of questions. <laughs> That's good. That is good. So Williamsburg, do you have any questions? And then if not, we'll go we'll go back to Blue Stem. No, we don't have any questions. Okay, Eisenhower, I'll give you a chance. Any questions from Eisenhower? Okay. Yes, no. Okay, that sounds good. We'll uh, we'll go back to Blue Stem. Maybe we can take two more questions, and then we'll we'll have a treat, and uh, we'll we'll do a milk toast. How's that? So Blue Stem, we'll we'll come back to you and your next question, and then we'll we'll just take. How about two more questions, and then we'll. Okay, we didn't hear your question there, Blue Stem, so can you? If a cow is pregnant, can you still milk it, and if so, how? Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you get that, Steve? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, we actually will breed their, for the uh, first service in about 60 days after they have had their baby, and then we'll milk them for another seven months after they have been confirmed pregnant. So they are actually, most of the time that they are milking, they are pregnant, yes. Okay. And one more question. How much money do you make by milking cows? <laughs> oh, well, again, math never was very good with me, you know, so. It, I, I'm really lucky because I have my brother's my banker, you know, so I, I never know. I just go down and I ask him, I say, uh, brother Tom, am I making any money? He goes, well, he says, you're, you're, you're making enough to pay off your loans. You know, <laughs> so that's, that's about all he tells me. I, you know, I don't know how to answer that, to be honest, because sometimes we have good years and sometimes we have bad years. And I will tell you this last year, was an exceptionally good year, okay? People were drinking milk, and the price was uh, was high all over the world, actually. So it was it was a good year to be a dairy farmer last year, okay? But you just never know. Uh, sometimes I think we don't do it for the money. I think we do it more for the, we just want, you know, we like being dairy farmers. And we're just really proud that we can, that we can produce a really nutritious product. Um, so, okay. yeah, hey, actually, that, let, let me see if I can answer that better. Um, I think right now, um, probably about 30 cents of every dollar that consumers spend on dairy products goes back to the dairy farmer. Okay, does that, does that make any sense? Okay, so here again, my math isn't very good, but if you pay four dollars for a gallon of milk, that would be a dollar twenty that the dairy farmer gets. Is that right? I think that's right. They're nodding their head, yes. I'll have to ask my grandson about that one. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Okay. Thank you, Steve. We we appreciate it. I think uh, I just want to say thank you to all the classes and for hanging in there. This is uh, this has been kind of fun for us, and and thanks to Steve and Harry for hanging in over there. This new technology is 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 awesome. So we want to yeah. thank you all for wanting to participate in this, and we hope you learned something. So we we really do. Um, I think everybody, the Farm Bureau brought 
milk and cookies for everybody? Does everybody have their milk? Yes, we do. You got it in your hands and everything. So can we all, uh, why don't we, I'll have Steve make the toast here for us and we'll toast Kansas agriculture and Kansas dairy farmers and, and the kiddos of Kansas, the fifth graders who are, who are, who are drinking milk and staying healthy. So Steve, I'll, I'll let you make a toast if we want to get our milk, milk up. So oh man, you, you bet. And we got my favorite, which is chocolate milk. Okay, everybody get your milk? All right. They're <laughs> <laughs> shaking their heads. They don't have their milk yet. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you guys are going to have to hurry up because I, I can't wait to drink mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it comes. <laughs> oh, it's It would be in cartons. So. <laughs> Okay, everybody ready? Let's wait. No. no. I don't know. Okay, I think we okay. have everybody now, Steve. So Okay. Everybody put your glasses up and here's a toast to nature's most perfect food, milk. Okay? You can enjoy it with anything. It's really good and it's good for you. All right? Bottoms up. Mmm. <laughs> Boy, this is the best part of this whole thing is getting to drink the chocolate milk. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for, for being with us. And uh, I, I hope you learned something and, and you guys all asked great questions. So we look forward to having you be milk drinkers for the rest of your lives. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And thank you. <laughs> That was awesome. That was awesome. Okay. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate it. We hope you had fun. And, and if there's anything we can ever do for you, if you want to learn more about Kansas agriculture, please, please let us know and we'll let you guys get back to work. How's that? So thank you. Wave goodbye. There we go. <laughs> Mm. Um, where's my clicker? Mm. We're trying to leave the meeting.